like the central bit of the essence of the soul. Therefore, it has to be. It has to. It's an arousal from above that it, that, that cannot be reached through the avoda of man. That's what we said, right? We talked about the lightning. Right. So we had a question about the fact that seemingly lots of people can be afraid and doesn't doesn't require. We're all afraid, isn't it? So that was one question. It just it sort of just doesn't seem right in terms of the fact that why do you have to access the essence of your Jewish neshama to be afraid? Seemingly, you could, it's, everybody's afraid all the time. Um, the other thing which kind of came up was. Uh, well, it, Simcha's not here right now. We talked, talked about the difference between Yiras Onesh and Yira Tato. The, the fear of being punished. Is that the same thing as the lower fear? That's the lower fear. The question is, is that there's something called Yira Tato, Yira Ilah. The lower fear, the higher fear. Right. And then there's something also called Yiras uh, Onesh. To be afraid of punishment. And are those the same thing? That was another question that came up. So in the midst of trying to figure that out, the, the next mimer over here is an Elul mimer, which we're probably going to learn. And I might as well hit you with the, uh, the uh, conflict now. Over there, we're gonna, first of all, it's going to speak about the, the idea that being a, like we blow the shofar in Elul in order to inspire fear, right? And that fear is called the Yira Tata, the lower fear. So it does kind of sound like there's a fear element involved in the lower fear, which is kind of like fear of punishment, not necessarily, but it's, it's connected. But over there it says something very interesting, which is that unlike love, which comes from above, fear has to be generated from below. Sounds strange? Exact opposite of what we're saying here. But it makes, it makes sense. Okay, but why does it make sense? Because in our, in our mundane activity, the things that, okay, you can light, the lightning comes from above, but it's not that great of, I mean, it's great, it's not that great of a thing to get you afraid of, it's frightening. But why does it come from below to be afraid of lightning? Because it's from below, because it's, it's, it has like an earthy, come, uh, pla- uh, earthy like a base, I'm saying it comes from you. It's like, more of base right, nature. Exactly. I don't know, yeah, but I don't know why, I mean, I don't know why it's lightning. Plane. Lightning seems like it's something that just scares you from above, but I, he, he brings a muscle, for example, like... kind of paranoia, it's not, a panic something. <laughs> okay, but... He, he brings, that's, it's, okay. Blow your mind. He brings the muscle of like a king. Right? This one I'm going to bring it, I'm trying to put the pieces together here. In the next mimer, he brings the muscle of a king. He says that, Som tasim alech amelech. You have to place upon yourself a king so that your fear should be on him. And the idea is that because you place your fear, because you chose this king for yourself, that's why your fear is on him. As opposed to, Another king that you don't fear so much because he's not your king. And that's what he means. Like you, you, you have to place the fear upon yourself. You have to basically, you know... Muster it up. You have to muster it up, right? It's, it's basically... So the idea is like this. There's an idea where we're saying now that the fear comes only from above, right? And you can't access the fear without an arousal from above. And over there it says that fear has to come from below. It's mamasha. It, it requires explanation. So... The idea is, it seems to me like this, and then also getting into your question, like what about just like stam fear that that's just happens from lightning? In other words, does all fear, you know, is in this category? Right. So it's, it seems to me like this. What we're talking about right now is you have a essence of your soul, right, which is essentially this warehouse, storehouse, treasure house of Yirat Shemaim, and it cannot... We're saying that it's, it's essential in that it's not relevant almost to come out. In other words, its natural state is to stay in a state of essence and not to show itself, right? So in order to bring it out, it requires like an, an aid from above because there's nothing in the natural world that can sort of, that has the ability to bring it out, right? So just being afraid of lightning or being a, just stam regular fear of a, of a regular person you, it's not the same category at all because that's not a fear that comes from such a deep place. That's more of like a natural fear. More of a primal fear, actually. Primal fear, natural fear, some, some fear that you can generate. It's a, it's a human type of fear. Okay. What we're talking about right, right now is not, is not a human type of fear. It's a fear of the neshama. And that's what we're saying. Like Even the lowest element of that fear, this one, even the lowest element of that fear, right, requires... 
an access to the very essence of the neshama. If, we, if you recall from le- yesterday's class, we said that you need to access the essence of your, your neshama even to bring out the lowest, simplest level of fear. Even the yir tata, which means even just like the, the simple kabbalist ol or the fear of punishment, if you want to get into that, that you're going to come and do the mitzvahs. You can't even take that simple first step unless you access the essence of your neshama. Do you remember that we spoke about that? So why is that? In other words, fear more or less comes easily to every person. If you're not Jewish, you don't have an essence of the neshama in that same way, right? So, the way I understand it is like this. That we're talking about the fear of the neshama, the godly fear. And even though it requires, it comes from below, in that you have to have the basic um, approach to it. It's not going to happen all, all, all by itself to you, right? That's not, that's not the meaning of it's an arousal from below that has nothing to do with you. You have to sign up for it. But even if you normally sign up for a regular fear, like I'm going to be fear of this king or I'm going to be fear of this bully, that doesn't, just because you sign up for a fear doesn't a- a- access you the essence of your neshama. Mm-hmm. What is it that access, accesses you this essence of the neshama? It's when you sign up for a fear of God in the form of either Torah and mitzvahs. So the second that you approach the mitzvah or the Torah, like we said, there's two ways. It's either through a hundred brachas or through Moshe, who's called Torah. And what I think it means is not that you have to make a hundred brachas specifically in order to get to this fear. It's like every time you make a bracha, every time you learn a piece of Torah, which is basically your fearing Hashem and is your willingness to come forth and have Kabbalah's ol and like do what He's asking you to do. But just doing that would not necessarily access you to the essence of the Nirshama unless the form in which it took was a Torah or a mitzvah. In which case, because you're dressing yourself up, dressing yourself up in this mitzvah, the, you're, you, it, that's an empowerment from above. That that level of fear of the essence of your neshama could never be arrived at through mere meditation. As he says, like, love can come from meditation. You can, right? you can access, like, the love of God and you can arouse your love to do mitzvahs merely from meditation. But the fear, you can't access unless you attach yourself to a mitzvah because it requires, like, a magical object. A, a, an object not from this world in order to enclose yourself in, in order to actually experience the true fear of heaven that's inside of your neshama. So even when you do, even when you're, 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 you're doing it just for the simplest reasons, you're not accessing such a high level of like the awe of Hashem. You're just approaching Hashem with the basic willingness to serve Hashem, but you do it in the form of a mitzvah, this accesses the essential fear. Let's just talk about that for a second. Do you understand what I'm trying to say there? Or not exactly? Well, like, it's clearly not, like, a primal. Because, like, all animals, they're all life, like, have fear in some way. Right. So, like, this isn't it's a, it's, a, it's the fear of the neshama. It's the godly fear. Right. But it's, its placement isn't, like, usually fear is, like, a life or death type of thing. But, like, like this is, like, a different type of, like, it's a different type of consciousness. Like, it's a different type of, of life or death type of thing. Well, we're talking, it's basically bittle, right? Right. Your willingness to negate yourself. Right. So in, even natural, general fear has that same movement. In other words, you're either going towards something in love or you're like running away from something because it frightens you. So the, the action, the pullback, is still a, a removal of self. Right? No matter, how, no matter when you're, you're, you're acting, definitely, no matter when you're, you're mm-hmm. presenting the meter of fear, right, the, the direction you're going is away, like back. Right? In other words, you're not expressing yourself, you're contracting yourself. You're hiding, you're crouching, you're running, right? So that's the, the, the absence of your self-expression. What about a soldier who tries, you know, the army's coming, there's fear, they got to go out and conquer it. So, so they're overcoming their fear. Right. Okay, but that's not called fear, it's called overcoming your fear, right? But, so, but that could be natural fear, right? In other words, just in general, fear is the meaning of lack of self. But to get to a lack of self, which is coming from the essence of the neshama. And basically, it's, a, it's an entire lack of self. In other words, like there's no you. Because this is t- talking about the, sort of the level of, uh, of reaching to where you exist in the, essence of the, in the essence of God, which is a n- complete non-entity, right? So that's the idea. When you're, when you're in the, your love, which comes from the revelations of God, that's not, a, as we said yesterday, it's not a complete non-entity because the revelations of God is also a thing, as it were. It's a presentation, it's an expression of something. So when you go and find your root in the presentation of God, there is some aspect of self there, an expression. 
But if you're going to go higher than that and find your root inside the essence of Hashem, it's a nullity. Does that make sense? You're not following. You, in, in nullity, it's like the kind of the, the ayin type of... Yeah, it's the ayin. The notion of yourself there is a non-self because what's there is just Hashem. You're, you become like a, like a pure servant. There's no, there, yeah, it's not even a servant. It's just an absence. You, instead of you, there's him. And the you that's in there, therefore, is a complete negation. Yeah, but the you that's in there is a sense to like... It's a negation. It's like just bowing down. Like it's but there is no you, right? It's like, in other words, it's, a, it's an absence of you. So it's not just that there's no you, but there's also no commentary on you. It's yeah, it's just him, right? right? And therefore, if there's just him, what is there of you? Nothing. So that's the idea of a, of a negation of self. Is your goof still there? No, I mean, there's just, it's, we're talking, we're talking about death, you're talking about like... No, we're talking about the uh, primordial existence where there only is Hashem and there's nothing else. Oh, of before course. you come into existence. Yes, yeah. But not of course, because you're going to come out of there. Very and you're going to exist. And then you're going to trace yourself back up to the point of the, the existence. And you're going to, and where are you then? So there's a certain aspect of yourself when you come into a state of expression, which starts with light coming out of the essence. Mm-hmm. And there's an aspect of you which even precedes that level of light. It's just nothing of you. Right? There's no expression whatsoever. It's just him. At that level, what what is it of you that's there? The absence of you. Right. And how does that come all the way down? This, the 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 uh, Shlutzen expresses itself as fear, because fear is, so to speak, a, a movement towards not being, not expressing yourself, not expressing your yesha, holding back, having iskafia, having kabbalah soul, versus approaching love, self-expression. Love is always bound up with some type of self-expression. Right. Right? So the, the source of the source of these two midos that you have in your, se- in your soul come from the light versus the essence. Do you, right? think, do you think that love always has to have some kind of self-expression? Love is a self-expression. It might be that you're loving someone like altruistically for, no, for no, no, not selfish reasons, but the very love itself is an expression. It's, an, it's, it's a revelation of your, of your being. Does a servant who loves his master like have his own individual... Uh... Again, he could be doing it for purely for his master. But the very feeling of love is a feeling of bubbling up of excitement of your of feeling yourself. Whereas the feeling of fear is not feeling yourself; it's fearing the other thing that's scaring you, and the absence of feeling self. So it's negation versus an expression, right? Yeah, I think. Being in a totally fearful situation, do you totally into the fear? You lose yourself in that. Right. And when you're in love, on the contrary, love. you're in love. It's like it's even though you're in love with the other person, or you're in love, you all you want to do is serve the other person. It's like it's, it creates a feeling of happiness within. But, but the, the challenge, the difficulty I have is like if you're doing a mitzvah, to have that same feeling of fear when something almost falls down in your head or whatever, or, or a lion attacks you type of way. It's hard to envision having that same, that same concept. All right, but that's what we're getting into. The that's difference between... I think that's what you're trying to get. No, I'm trying to actually delineate it from that. In other words, the, the regular natural fear that a, person fe- that a person feels comes not from a mitzvah, right? But to experience sort of the, the essential love of your, the, excuse me, the essential fear of your neshama, right? You can't tap into that unless you're doing a mitzvah. That's the whole point of this thing. How do you reach to the fear of Hashem? Only with mea brachas. In other words, only through an arousal from above, as we said yesterday, or from Torah. Maybe we don't remember the whole mimer that we're learning yesterday. But the idea is that you can't just tap into this fear from above, like this, this true essential essence of bittel, Unless there's a tool in your hand that comes from there and uh, enables you to touch it, right? So we're saying that this is, when, when, you, when you approach, when you have the, enough wherewithal to approach a mitzvah and decide to do it, right? Then the, the mitzvah itself d- dons upon you this essential level of your soul. And it's now, in, even though you're, you're not necessarily feeling such a high level of bitzel, that's the point, you don't have to feel such a high level of bitzel, but that level of bittul is in you because the mitzvah itself brings it there. And this okay. is after the, the Maya brachas? Again, I think it's, it's just, it says, yeah. The, the, it, I don't think you have to hun, say a hundred brachas in order to get there is, is like sort of the idea. It's that Maya, the, the, it's not like you have to get to a hundred brachas and then you get to fear. 
But the idea is that each bracha brings you to that level of fear, right? When you say a hundred brachas, you have a, a, a full level of that fear, right? But the whole idea is not so much that you have to do a certain amount of things. It's that every time you do a mitzvah, the mitzvah is not from you. That's the point. It's not human, right? It's from God. The Torah is not from you. It's from God. You didn't, we didn't make these things up. We, they're not objects from here. They're chepsei shamayim, right? So when you all of a sudden take upon yourself one of the objects of divinity, so it has the ability to unearth from the, from the Jew the essence of his soul. This inner depth of total bittel, of like essential bittel, it's in you and you're walking around with it all day long. But in order to get it to come out, it won't arrive unless you have an object from heaven which, can, which has the power to reveal it. And is it fear or awe? No, that's the point. Is even the simplest level of, of fear, which we, we don't even have to call it fear, you can call it, call it Kabbalah's Ol if you want, or fear of punishment, low levels of fear, right? Just to do a mitzvah, you have to have some, there is some simple low level of fear that's involved in that, just because either you, otherwise you just throw off the yoke altogether, right? It's like sort of fear that's binding you to it to some degree. Even this lowest level of fear, what we're saying is, it has contained in it, and it really comes from this very essential place. Because the level of retracting yourself is fear no matter wh- where it's found on the, on the side. Either it's a total bit of self or an awe of Hashem where you're feeling Him and you're not feeling yourself. Or even down to the very simplest level of, of Kabbalah's all, inside of that is a movement of givura of contraction, and it has in it, therefore, already the seeds of this essential bit. Okay. Are you able to access that? Every time you do a mitzvah, that's what we're saying. No, it's a Person. It's a magical gift that comes for every Jew every time you do a mitzvah. It's not a feeling, right? It's basically, it's, it's like a, it's an unearthing, it could be a feeling. I mean, you can go many levels of it, but we're trying, the point that we're trying to bring out is that no matter what low level of fear you're having, and yes, anytime anybody does a mitzvah, they're having a certain sense of Kabbalah soul, right? The, again, they could be doing anything in the, in the world that they want to. The fact that they're putting all that aside... There's a certain measure, and your actions are always based on emotion, on love or fear. So the fact that you're, you know, you're going to put on talis and tefillin, you're going to make sure you do it in the right time, and all these things, there's a Kabbalist old element of every Jew. It's not like you don't have to be a special Jew. The, the putting of the yoke of heaven upon yourself. Right? So in that, there's a certain level of fear. It's a lower fear. And what we're saying is that the second you do that, when you walk into the mitzvah, the reason you're able to even access that lower fear is because the essence of your soul has to come out even in order to, for you to be holding by a state of lower fear. Does it make sense, anything we're saying here? Okay. I don't know. It's, uh, it's an yeah, interesting topic. Interesting. What? Interesting. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. The Kikata, though, is the, is the, the ayin, though. That's kind of what, like what differentiates that from the love in the first place. Okay. It's yeah. like a totally different, totally different relationship. You guys good over there? Well, we're discussing what you're saying. What's going on? What's going on? No, I, I don't know how, how it started, <laughs> why you guys are talking, but you're saying the fear you're talking about is the fear of God. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, but there's a lot of people that have fear of God that but, aren't Jews. But they don't have mitzvahs. This is the whole point I'm how trying to get. How do they get. the fear of God then? It's not the fear of God. It's not, it's not the same type of thing. It's not the essential, essential bittel of, of the soul, right? You can only really tap into this like true nullity before God if there's a mitzvah involved. He, he, it has to be granted to the human being. He does not able to re- bring himself to such a level on his own. He's just not. So if you don't have mitzvahs, this level of bittel and, and, and is, is not aware. It, it's, not, it's not available. In other words, what does it mean to have the fear of God, right? I have the fear of God, I have the fear I want to serve God. But you, you can't even serve God, right? Unless you have mitzvahs. So what does it mean actually to, to, to have the fear of God? It's not, it doesn't, it's not a natural fear. It's like they have the fear of God like they have the fear of lightning. That's not, called the, that's not the type of fear we're talking about. It's a natural fear. We're talking about the true fear of God Almighty. You can only actually be in the presence of God Almighty if His presence comes to you in the form of a Torah mitzvah. It's like you're not, you have to, like we said, you have to, before when he said it comes to fear, you have to put the fear upon yourself, right? Because you have to choose this person as your king. And if you, if you don't choose him as your king, you're not going to be afraid of the other one as the same way. If you don't have mitzvahs, you can't choose this person as your king. 
Not in the same way, right? Because you can't serve Him. There's no tool with which to serve Him. So only when you have these divine tools, you step into a divine space, then it becomes relevant to have this fear. The fear is of God. If there's no mitzvah present, God is not present in that level. So you can't have the fear of Hashem unless the mitzvah turns it on, like, like creates the space for it. Because you're not in the presence of a mitzvah. What are you in the presence of? The world. And the world, okay, the world is God, but the world is God hiding in a million garments. It's not, it's not the presence of God in, in the same way. So whatever you're afraid of in the world, that, in other words, we're saying like that's kind of like love. Love, you can meditate and you can realize, you know, there's a God, all this is really coming from God, and you can love God. But to fear God, you have to actually have a help from above. You have to be in the presence of God in order to truly unearth like the true bittle of nullity before the essence of Hashem. It's not, it, doesn't, it can't come naturally to the human being. So how does it come? It comes through a mitzvah. Once you approach the mitzvah and you do the mitzvah, suddenly you're like in, shrouded in a divine light from the Orin Sov and from above that now you can fear God. It's, it unearths that fear from your soul. We have to have a common, like, if we're putting to fill, uh, is there a common we need to be able to access that, or is it something that... It happens automatically. The kavana can bring you to higher and higher and higher levels of revealing this fear. But we, we've been saying over and over again, even just the simple lowest level of Kabbalah soul, in order to get that going, right, it's only possible if you actually put the yoke on you, right? Da'el, again, you have to put the yoke, I see you're not very satisfied with the answer, but if you don't put the yoke on yourself, you don't have Kabbalah soul, you don't have acceptance of the yoke. If you don't have a mitzvah, you can't put the yoke on yourself. I know what you're saying. It comes together with the mitzvah. I know what you're saying, but I've seen it. You've seen, you've seen a goy do a mitzvah? Is that what you're trying to explain I, to me? I've seen people have you, the yoke of heaven on but, them. But what does it mean, the yoke of heaven? That's what I'm trying to say. What is the, more than me. What is the yoke of... It's not true. What is the yoke of heaven? The yoke of heaven is the... Uh, excuse me. What is a yoke? What is a yoke? Okay, a yoke... Yes. Is a, they get it from... Get two oxen and tie it together. That's right. I've seen and what does that mean, a yoke? It means that you carrying yoke. something. Right. What are you carrying? You're carrying... A load, a burden. Right. The burden has to be put on you. The, you cannot carry a burden if the burden was never given to you. That's what I mean simply. Yeah. I'm not saying that these are not wonderful chassidi umos olam, righteous n- Gentiles. I'm saying that to access the essential fear of a Jewish soul, even a Jew cannot access that, even if he's the holiest person in the world, unless he's at that moment carrying the yoke of heaven, which means doing a mitzvah. It doesn't, it's, not, it's not available. It's in a state of absolute... Helam, concealment. It, certainly the non-Jews do not have access to this. A Jew doesn't even have access to this. It's in a state of absolute concealment. Because what is it? It's the essence of your soul in a state of non-being entirely. Like Moshe Rabbeinu. Inside of the essence where all there is is Hashem. There's no self whatsoever. No one's getting there because they're putting up in the arms and being afraid of lightning. It's just not happening. You, can, even, you can't access it. But what can? how can you access it? If it's granted to you. Right? If, if there's a mystical object that comes your way and you grab onto it, supernaturally, it can unearth that fear from a, from a Jew. Because again, the Jew is the only person who has access to those supernatural objects called mitzvahs and Torah. We're the only ones commanded in them. So it comes out. Now, what do you see when it comes out? You might not even see the Jew. This is what Ephraim is after. You might not even see the Jew in, in, a, in a position where he looks like he's He's, he's, you know, fearful and, and reaching some level of divine communion. You might not see anything. You might see just a guy putting on tefillin and eating matzah. And, and, and yes, that's a low level of fear. But what we're saying is that inside of that low level of fear, you can't even get to that low level of fear unless ultimately you're triggering the essential level of fear that is being unearthed at that moment of Kabbalah soul. Because what's really making him do the mitzvah in the moment that he's doing it, he's accessing the divine. So this is, this is the, it's, it's, you can't see this per se, because we're saying it, it shows up even on the lowest level of fear. Simple Kabbalah soul. And it's, it's only found in the Jewish Nisham. So you don't get this, 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 uh, this, this level of fear unless, this real level of fear unless you do a mitzvah. Exactly. Meaning, like, before you do the mitzvah, you have, you have this, this fear coming up from your Ezen Nisham, but... It's concealed. It's concealed. 
Right, and any other fear could be natural fear of lightning. It could be like a, it could be a fear of the awesomeness of the powers of nature. It could be medita- meditating on the greatness of God. Fear of death. It's fear of death, fear of monsters, fears of yeah. dragons. It doesn't matter. Whatever it's not to going to ultimately like summon from you a level of total bittel. Mm-hmm. Even though when you well, access that level of total bittel, it's not necessarily recognizable on you in such a deep level that suddenly you look like Moshe Rabbeinu. But guess what? You look like Moshe Rabbeinu because Moshe Rabbeinu is a mitzvah doer and all of a sudden you're a mitzvah doer. The simplest Jew who's doing the simplest mitzvah is holding on some unbelievably cosmic level of total bittel of his neshama. Because what is he doing? What is he doing? He's not just loving and fearing God. He's like lost his very self inside of some divine object that is beyond this world. You can't get there if you don't have a mitzvah. You understand what I'm saying, Dale? No, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I totally understand. Those, then there must be other kind of fears that God gives people. They're natural fears. No, godly fears. I'm but they're this. natural fears of God. In other words, God also is, is, is the heavens and earth. Right? Right? I think people bittle really much to the ones of God. Again, when you say bittle, yeah. are they meditating? No. Are they dancing? Are they no. screaming? Because no. what, if they're not doing a mitzvah, it's not bittle. Because a mean? general created being is by definition not a bittle. He experiences himself. And he can't get out of it. He cannot get out of it. Jew, <laughs> non-Jew alike, we cannot get out of it. Oh. The only thing is, if you do a mitzvah... But you're granted from above to be in, 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 in shr- like in, in, enshrined, I don't know, ra- in, in wrapped inside of an energy that comes from above creation and therefore that's the only way to get out of it. I, if I, they're I, not doing that, they're not doing that. So you can get excited about what you're seeing, but what you're, you have to also sort of use your brain on what you're seeing. It's just only a certain level that can be reached. Even Avram Avinu, I'll give you this. Even Avram Avinu, you think they're more holy than Avram Avinu? Obviously not. He couldn't reach this level because he didn't have mitzvahs. Get that in our heads, right? Until mitzvahs came into the world, this level of bittah was not available on earth. And once it is, even the simplest Jew who's doing the simplest mitzvah is accessing the essence of fear when he does that. Because when he walks into the mitzvah, he's a whole different entity. He's being lifted up by a divine force. That's the idea. Okay, I think we got it out there. Let's go on. V'yesh lehosif. Okay, so we're in the middle of a few in- yanim over here, but let's add. Sh'yesh yisron b'amshachas yisrodus le'ela sh'agide Moshe Torah legabi amshachas sh'agide me'a brachas. Over and above the amshacha through a hundred blessings. Translation. So we got through saying yesterday that essentially there's two answers to the question of is fear such an easy thing because the, the, the Torah writes Ma Hashem shoel what is Hashem your God asking from you just to fear Hashem and then we said is fear so simple right and we gave two answers why it is simple one was by Moshe it's simple and one was don't read Ma, what is Hashem asking you, but rather a hundred is, Maya, a hundred is Hashem is asking you. And therefore we say, if you do a hundred brachas, you'll get to that fear. Or if you're Moshe, you'll get to that fear. So what do, we, what do we sort of learn out? That you cannot get to this fear unless you have a help. And the help is either a hundred blessings or it's Moshe. Moshe rep- representing Torah. And a hundred blessings representing basically doing any mitzvah and making a blessing on the mitzvah. So now we're saying there's an yesh lahosif going back to the where we just read yesh yisrom b'amshachas yisrus la'ela. There's an there's an advantage of the arousal from above shali dei Moshe that comes through the Moshe part, the Torah part. Lagabe amshachas shali dei me'abrachas over and above what you're able to access by making a hundred blessings. So in general, we're saying there's two ways to sort of tap into this fear. Torah gives it to you in a better way than making doing mitzvahs and making blessings on mitzvahs. Either of them will arouse this essential fear, but Torah more so. Study of Torah. Study of Torah. Wow. Ki Torah panimius. And why is that? Because Torah is the Indian of panimius. Mitzvah is the Indian of makif. What does that mean? It means that Torah isn't designed for you to understand. They're both totally godly entities from beyond planet Earth and all the planets and all the earths and all the heavens. Right? They don't come from here. 
However, and you can see that plainly, with, for example, when you're going to start putting on tefillin, or shechting an animal, or doing a circumcision, or any mitzvah, that basically none of the mitzvahs really make all that much sense. And there's a reason they don't make sense. It's because they're from God, and God is completely beyond comprehension. Torah also is from God, but strangely, Torah was designed to be comprehensible to man in some form or another. In fact, if you're not understanding the Torah that you're learning, you're not really learning it. There's two, in this, there's two levels of Torah, just to be clear here. There's called Mikra, or Torah Shabbat the written Torah, and there's Torah Shabbat Peh, the oral Torah. When you're learning the written Torah, you're getting the mitzvah by just reading it. But there, it's just, it's really a mitzvah that you're doing. But if you want to, like, do the, the, the mitzvah of Limud Torah, then it's, it, it's in the realm of understanding. If you don't understand the Torah that you're learning, you're not fulfilling that mitzvah. It's about comprehending. So basically, Torah is a panimi. It comes inside of you, and, and even though it's divine, it actually enters your finite space and, and gets grasped by you. And therefore, it has an advantage over the godliness which comes down and doesn't make any sense to you and just sort of wraps you up. Like a mitzvah. Like a mitzvah. Therefore, all, also the arousal from above that comes down through Torah, he nimshech is v'panimius. We see that it, it affects you in a more panimius way. Torah itself is a panimi, and therefore it's drawn down into a panimi, in, into you. And we say this is bedugmas isurus dilaela shenim shecha shenim shecha is aydei avoda. In fact, this is like a type of arousal from above that gets drawn down through avoda. What's he talking about here? So there's two types of arousal arousals from above, <clears throat> right? One is an arousal from above that can be triggered by an arousal from below, right? So you do something, you prepare your vessel, and then the light comes in. Now the light that comes in after you've worked is always going to be a light that's comprehensible, because that's the point of it. It's like the reward of your service, right? So that's the quality of, a, of an arousal from a, below, that it can produce an arousal from a, above that you can grasp, right? But usually the downside of that is that it's a lower level of arousal from above. Because you can grasp it, it shows that it's like not as godly. So here now we're saying, when it comes to Torah and mitzvahs, which are both arousal from above, that are not reachable from arousal from below. Meaning to say, if you didn't have Torah given to you, you wouldn't come up with it yourself. If you didn't have a mitzvah given to you, you can never find it yourself. You can never reach anything of that status yourself. But once they come down, the Chiddush of Torah is that it comes into you just in the similar way that the lower arousal from above would come into you, which is accessible by your own work. Because Torah is like... Is, is, is a wonder in that way. It's a penimi. So even though it's completely beyond the spectrum of man, it affects you in such a way as something which is not completely beyond the spectrum of man would affect you. Is it clear? You missed it. One more time. One more time. Right, so there's two, there's two arousals from above in general, two levels of arousals from above, right? One is, one is lower, and it's the one that you can access by your own avoda. The, but the good thing about it is that it comes inside of you and you can grasp it, you can experience it. Okay? The bad thing about it is that it's basically limited, it's not as godly because you can access it. Because you can understand it. Right, because, exactly. Because it's, it's like, comes at your beck and call. When you do a voter, you can, you can automatically pull it down. It means it's like enslaved to you. It means that it's sort of worldly in a sense. It's not completely beyond the bounds of man. This, then there's that type of arousal which is completely beyond the, arousal, the bounds of man. And that's called either Torah or mitzvahs. Right. Because they're, they're unaccessible unless they're given to you. And this is, right? the, second, this is the second. This is the second type of arousal from above. High, it's called an arousal from above which is not accessible from arousal from, from below. There's nothing you can do, so to speak, to... But well, we said in order to get to the, the one where, you are, where you're able to understand you have to get to the, to the, to the, to the basic one, which is mitzvah. Because, because similarly, I didn't understand what you just said there. I, I similarly, with, with Tara, it will be a high level because we're, we're able to understand it. You don't, right. you don't have the mitzvah of the Torah unless, unless, you, unless you, you understand it, unless it's written, you know, the, the written Torah. So wouldn't that be a, 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 a stepping stone in order to understand Torah, in order to have the mitzvah of understanding Torah? 
um, there's no doubt that you have to do something in order to, when you do a mitzvah, you're going to do Torah. In other words, that comes, you have to do something. But the point is, is that these things are not from here. It's not like you, you could just access them with regular human work, right? They're, they're, they're from above. Right? So the point is, they're, in general, they're called an arousal from above that is not accessible by an arousal from below. Right? Unless Torah was given from Shemaim, for example, it could be thousands, no, tens of thousands of years, we'd never just get to that level by working really hard. It's not accessible by human hands. You see what I'm saying? Even though they set a standard of rare human conduct. In, if, yeah, it's cause it's, 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 yeah, because it's not just... We had that before. We had the laws of Noah. We had... Civil law, that's fine. The world can can have yeah, that, that was like that was like that was like very um, overt. It wasn't subtle those laws. Like don't kill. That's not true. Kill. First of all, there's ext- extreme subtleties in the laws of Noah. It's not just seven. Just like we don't have ten, it goes breaks down into a whole system of legalities uh-huh. and civil law and everything, financial everything. No, no, but even like you know like like internal things, the church does. What I'm trying to say is that even in the in the Noahide laws, there's good midos. There's laws of... It's a perfect religion for mankind. Really? The only thing... Yes. The only thing that's lacking is infinity. Because it's made for the world to be a perfect world. It's not made in order to bring the world out of worldliness. Why are there like priests of this no higher religion? There, there are. You'll get into it. It's a whole thing. People are like spending their entire lives sort of spreading it and, and teaching it and, and so forth. It's, it's, it's one of the Rebbe's campaigns. It's very big now. It's big. I know I had priests. Anyway, it's the, it's the religion of the future, right? But the point is, is that what's, right. what's different about it is that it's not, it's not an arousal from above that, that cannot be reached by human hands, so to speak. It's intended to be understood simply. There's, no, there's nothing like sort of supernatural about it. None of, the, none of the mitzvahs, in that capacity, I'm agreeing with you, that none of the mitzvahs are supernatural, right? right? Or, or like, like incomprehensible. Like fill in this right, it's not in there. Yeah. So, Yosef, I'm just trying to get to your answer here because you sort of got us into this question. In other words, you want me to clarify what we're saying regarding Torah and mitzvahs right now? Uh, yes, I'm, I would like to know whether it is, uh, is it, we, we, we have to come to a stage of, of, um, of revealing the concealed part of the year, which is doing something to... For the mitzvah, not because of the year's age, but to to do the mitzvah, and that comes from the Eitzim Neshama. So my question is: Is that a first level? Once once you reach once you reach the aspect of of year of year, which is revealing the concealed part of your year, which is which is uh, the mitzvah, then 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 we reach this Indian of Torah. Which no, no? the same thing. Torah mitzvah both equally are that thing which you have to do in order to un- uncover your inner fear. In, this, in a certain sense, they're the same. That's how we started it. Now we're just st- discussing the subtle difference between them. And right. it's not like exactly. stage one, stage two. It's not about stage that's one, my, stage two. That's my question about the subtle difference okay. between them. Hey. Uh, with the tarot. So let me explain it to you. What's the subtle difference between them? They both are arousal from abo- above... Yes. That man cannot access on his own. Both Torah and mitzvahs. Yes, the only difference is that Torah, when it comes down, it also becomes comprehensible. Okay. Whereas mitzvahs, when they come down, they're not comprehensible. Okay. And the only the reason we got all excited and worked and, and, and lost is just because we com- made a comparison. That th- just the way that a arousal from above, which is accessible from an arousal from below, a lower stage of arousal from below, mm-hmm. comes in and becomes comprehensible. Yeah. In that same way, the Torah, which is an arousal from above, which is not accessible from an arousal from below, it also comes in and becomes comprehensible. The whole thing I'm describing right now is this five words in these parentheses. That's, that's the whole not, thing. Torah is not accessible from a rasa from below? Torah, that's the definition of Torah and mitzvahs. They're not accessible from hand, the arousal from below, right? We've said that a few times. These are things that are an arousal from above, which the arousal from below cannot reach, right? However, Torah can be comprehensible, just like something with an arousal from below can reach, even though it's not. That's, that's the little point that is uh, confusing us. Okay. V'lechein gam ha-yira shenimshechis al yedei zeh hi hergish penimi yoser. And therefore, that fear which is drawn down from Torah, or, or basically is unearthed from your soul, 
through the form of Torah as opposed to mitzvah, it is felt in a deeper way. In other words, it has more of an, of an effect of bringing to light the inner fear that we possess. You pointing at something? No, is that the second page? No. Oh, we get to the second page. I see. Okay. Let's pass these around. All right. So, let's go on to Os Dalit. Al Pizei Yesh Lomar. Accordingly, we can say, De Ma Umeya. Right? We have these two things called Ma and Meya. Yesh Bechol Echad Mehem Maile. Each one has something the other doesn't have. First of all, let's just discuss what is Ma and what is Meya. Just let's get that out there. Who knows? What's Ma? Ma, it's like Right? In this particular context, though, what, what are we saying is Ma? Bitto. Here. It's the Torah for Moses? In other words, I'm not going to say that that's not true, but in this context, we're saying the Ma is the essential Bitto that comes from the essence of the soul, which cannot be accessed without a catalyst from above. That's Ma, right? That's what it means. Ma Lokecha Shoel Mi Ma. As the Tzema Tzedek said in the previous chapter, the what is what Hashem is asking from you, right? He's asking from you to reveal the essential bittel of your soul, right? And we say, what? That's such an easy thing to do. How do we do it? How do we do it? So, no problem. Not lightning, not meditation, Torah and mitzvahs. That's how you'll get it out of there, right? Okay, so what's Maya? Maya, I would say, I would say would be that, that, that second part of what we were speaking about, about Torah being part of that Torah can even be part of you. No. Behind our brushes. Behind our brushes. And? And bringing that fear down with the mitzvahs. And? That's, and, a, that's 100 and, brachas. And Torah learning. And Torah. Meya is Torah and mitzvahs. Ma is the essential bitl of the soul, like this thing you have inside of you, which is total self-negation, which is hiding once you become a created being. And Meya is the way to get it out. It's either 100 brachas or the Torah of Moshe. Right? It's the arousal from above, which is an aid for you to unearth this treasure house of Yira Shemaim, which is inside of your soul, which gets c- concealed when you get born. You following this? That's called Ma and Meya. You with me, they Yaakov? Very similar to Ma. You're all over this. Yeah, I was just thinking that the Ma from heaven, wasn't that kind of like the same thing as the, um, the Hunter's Rahot? It's, it's similar. It's arousal similar. from above. Okay. It was like an everyday thing, right? And then uh, every day we were constantly reminded and we had this... Um, yeah, that's ma. Going on to, yeah, okay. Yeah, I will, yeah, it's connected there. Os Dalit. Ba'al pizeh yesh lomer de ma ume yesh b'chol echad mehem mindless. So it comes out that each one of these two things has an advantage over the other one. They each one have a quality that the other one doesn't have. The essential bitul and the arousal from above that brings, down, brings out that essential bitul. Tezeh shema hu behelam. The very fact that the ma inside of your soul is concealed, and in order for it to come out of its concealment, who are the hamshachas bechinas meya? It's only by having a, 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 a hamshacha of the inyan of meya, right? As we said, the only way to get it out is if you have help from above of meya, which is what or shalomaylam yishtalshlus. Meya represents a light from above the worlds, right? Torah, mitzvahs, a light which is beyond the seder yishtalshlus. And why is this? It's because you see already right there, there's an advantage in Maya over Ma. Maya is like the redeemer of Ma. Ma is concealed. Maya brings the concealment to revelation. We see there's a quality that Maya has over Ma. So if you recall from yesterday's class, we were saying that sometimes Ma is big and sometimes Ma is small. I'm going to just go through that one more time so we remember ourselves. We said that when we say, Ma Hashem Elokech Hashem Ma'ach, right? What is Hashem asking you? And we say, to fear Hashem. We say, fear Hashem, that's a huge thing. So we, we see Ma, which goes on the fear of Hashem, is big. And we say, don't worry, you can access it through something small, through Maya, through making a hundred brachas. So we see Ma is big, Maya is small. The other way of looking at it is Ma Hashem Elokech Hashem Elokech Hashem Elokech means what's Hashem asking you after all? Something small. 
right? In other words, the, the simple literal meaning of the verse is indicating that ma is not such a big deal. All I'm asking you is this, nothing big deal. And whereas, what's the response is, you'll achieve that through meya brachas, and we say meya is the totality of number, right? Ten times ten, all the spheres, the Indian of Sovib. So all of a sudden, ma is small, meya is big. And we, we, fit, we, we got into this conflict where we don't know which, which one's big, which one's small. And now we're going to answer that conflict because we see that each one has something the other one doesn't have. Right? Why is ma small and meya is big? Because ma representing the essence of the, essence of the neshama okay, is small, i.e. it has a it has a chesor, it has a disadvantage that it's stuck in a state of concealment. So meya is the big savior. It comes out and brings it. Meya is bigger than ma in that capacity because it has something over ma. You need, you need meya to get to ma. Exactly. So therefore ma is small, meya is big. And that's what he says, l'chein l'shen ma motor al davar katan. That's why, in one connotation, the word ma means something small. U'meyahu shleimus amispar, whereas meya is the totality of number. So therefore, we, we, we sorted it out in one version. That's why ma is small and meya is big. Ava le'idach, but on the alternatively, zesha or shelamayla mishtal shlus meya. This notion that the light which is above the ishtal shlus, which we said is called meya, the Torah or the mitzvahs, the light which is beyond the world, this is ba begilu lamata. It only comes and shows itself down here in this world. In order to help us. Because we are like, we have this ma inside of us, which is massively awesome. It's the essence of Hashem sitting inside of a Jew. And the whole reason that there's even Torah and mitzvahs to begin with is in order to allow us to reveal the essential being inside of us, then who's the bigger one over here? The, the Maya, the, the Torah mitzvahs are totally subservient. Their whole purpose of existence is merely because they're coming to arouse and bring out the real cause, which is the Ma. So there you see the exact opposite. That the Maya is something small and uh, something tough, a secondary thing to the Ma, which is the champion who's needing to be saved. In other words, the fact is he's the savior. On the other hand, He's a savior because the one being saved is worthy of being saved. So the sa- who's, the, who's the great one? The savior or the thing he's being saved? The thing that he's saving, right? So in that capacity, you can see that Ma is bigger, more significant than Maya. And this exists in the Nefesh, like the, the Bittal, and this can, like, exists in, in the Nefesh Elokis. Is that like where we're saying it's housed? Like this special, what bitl? Yeah, yes. The bitl of the ma. Yeah, the ma is yeah. inside of your. It, it's what your godly soul is. Not just it's contained in there. Oh, That's wow. what it is, right? It's just this big ma. That's what the soul is called. You know. By the way, the gematria of ma is Adam, right? So in other words, the it's and it says atem kruim Adam. There is no such thing as Adam. The word Adam is it goes on the yidn, right? Because that goes on the neshama. So the, it's literally the thing that's inside of you. Which we're trying to all, this, all we're talking about in Tanya all the time. We're trying to get it to reveal itself. It's Ma. It's the Abishter, right, inside of your body. And the only way to get it out is if you do a mitzvah, you do some Torah. That's the only way to get it out. So what's the who's bigger in this scenario? The Ma. It's just that it requires a few tools, like secondary tools, to show it. But Maya in this capacity is much lower than Ma because the Ma is the essence of the thing. The Maya is merely the, merely the revelation of it. This sounds like a bit like I am to my lover and my lover to me. A different, a different slant, you know, of uh, the one in the human. The it's, it's We're going to learn that mimer in, 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 next, but what do you mean exactly by that? Because you're saying it, it goes back and forth from above and below. It's uh, what's higher, the lower, but unless you arouse from below, it's not going to come from, uh, from above. You need something to do down here to, to bring it down, right? Okay. But it's also like not exa- like it's from above, but it also is in us. It's not like it's something that is summoned externally. Let's just finish this this line here. Do it. Um, okay, so so what? Are, who's the bigger one? It comes only to reveal lamata It comes to arouse the ma of the soul. And this is because there's a quality in ma over maya. And the bittel over the trigger that r- shows the bittel. And by drawing down the meya to arouse the ma, 
Misvasef iloy gam bechines mea. This is a big thing we're going to get into in the next chapters, as he says, chapters 8 and 9. But here's the thing. When ma mea comes to arouse the ma, okay, what winds up happening is that the mea gets an aliyah from basically, because, and, and what is the aliyah in, in simple is that the purpose of it becomes, it, its whole self worth and its purpose becomes clear and, 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 and significant suddenly because it's doing its job. In other words, the whole reason there's such a thing called Torah mitzvahs is to arouse the Jew to be able to be seen, right? Because if you don't have a Torah mitzvah, he can't come out. He's stuck in a state of concealment. So when the Jew comes out and it, all of a sudden there's a Jew performing Torah mitzvahs, the Torah mitzvahs are now on a whole other level. They're not just theoretical divine objects who could serve to reveal the Ma'ah. They're now in the process of revealing the Ma, which means they're now accessing the essence and the revelations when they're accessing the essence are in a whole another. they have an aliyah when that happens, right? They tap into the source of themselves when that happens. And therefore, we see that the Ma is the champion, so to speak. The Ma is greater because it is able to be a mashpia onto the Maya when the Maya comes down and is mashpia onto the Ma, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so we'll have to hold here. You know, like that story. I don't know if you ever heard that story with the Rebbe. A Hasid came to the Rebbe and uh, asked, asked him for asked him for a bracha, and, and another Hasid was there, right? And, and you overheard what we said.